and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I'm going to talk about how I created atmosphere in this painting. So before we start then, I just wanted to mention briefly about reference photos. So I'm going to show you the original reference photo that I used and I wanted to say thank you to Katrina for letting me paint Tonks and use their photo in this video. So I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you. So first of all then, this is a very lovely photo, but I do want to change it really to make it more appropriate for painting. So I just want to point out then that the camera has sharpened both Tonks and her shadow reflection in the water. And I just want to say that this is not how your eye would see it. So I'm going to show you how it would be in real life by putting an iris blur across this image so that you can see how it should actually be. So you need to be aware of this when you're using reference photos. So my aim then for this painting is to create something a bit ethereal and almost poetic. So I need to simplify this photo to remove any distractions around Tonks, which won't add to the atmosphere of my painting. A looser painting will create something much more atmospheric. You need to focus on trying to paint the atmosphere of the photo and not get lost in the actual detail of the photo. So for me, the most important parts of this photo are the shape of Tonks, that lovely curve and her reflection in the water. But the shadow is just too much in focus. So we're going to change that. Also notice this beautiful area of light on Tonks' tail. I will need to repeat this in some way on the right hand side by adding some warmth into this blue. So let's start painting and I'll speak more about how I added atmosphere as I go along. Before I start, I apply a light wash of raw sienna and terps onto my canvas to give it that lovely orange earthy colour. So I'm doing a very light underpainting in raw umber and terps just to get all my proportions correct and to make it a bit easier for me when I start adding the colour. I'm keeping it loose because I'm concentrating on creating atmosphere. The tighter your underpainting, the tighter your overpainting will be. So keep it loose. So I'll show you a photo then of the underpainting so you can see it a little bit more clearly now that this, um, this part has been done. So now on the second layer then, I'm starting to add the colour. I just want to show you the colour wheel um, so you understand what I'm talking about. So this painting is controlled by the colour opposites. It's based around blue and orange and purple and yellow. And by mixing these colour opposites together in varying degrees, it allows me to paint in neutrals which will produce much more realistic colours. So this is what we want. We want to be painting in neutrals we don't want to be painting in the most saturated forms of the colour. So back to the painting then, I'm keeping it very loose and with each layer that I do, I allow it to dry before starting the next one. If, you're not, if you want to know a little bit more about my process, if you watch some of my other videos, I go into the actual process in a bit more detail. Here I am mixing Gamsol into my paint to, to allow it to flow a little bit more easily. I start off quite muted with my colours and work up to a more saturated colour as I go. If you can go straight in correctly with your values, temperatures and hues, then that's great. But I'm not able to do this and so I try to work up to what I think I'm looking at. If you're a person who lays their paint quite thickly, then I would advise you to scrape back your paint if you make mistakes with either the colour or the value choices that you make. Don't try to correct it on the canvas by mixing in more paint as it will become muddy and overworked very, very quickly. 
you're much better off just scraping back the paint and having another go at it. As I said, really, that method doesn't work for me. I prefer to work up to it in a, a layer process. You might notice also that I am changing between two brushes. Um, I'm using flat haired brushes and also a long haired coma brush by Rosemary & Co. I find that the long haired coma brush is very good for doing the reflections because the hairs are very long and it allows you to be very expressive with the paint and also drag wet on wet paint. Flat brushes tend to take the paint off um, when you start to get a little bit thicker. So if you want to use the process of wet on wet, these brushes are very good. So I do, I swap between the two depending upon the area that I'm painting and how loose and expressive I want it to be. So here is a photo of the second layer then. So moving on to the third layer then, with each layer I'm using less Gamsol and a bit more paint. But I am naturally quite a thin painter anyway. I prefer to build up the layers than go straight in. I just find it less stressful and I'm much less likely to overwork the piece. Because if I know I'm not correct in an area, I just move on knowing I will sort it out in the next layer, which is usually the next day. I want to arrive at the end of my painting with a picture that is as fresh as possible. And having experimented with various painting methods, I'd found that this one works the best for me. I'm not using any Gamsol on this layer, but I have replaced this with linseed oil. So because I have not got close enough to what I wanted on my third layer, my fourth layer is, is a much longer and more of a, a rework layer. As I'm trying to create atmosphere in this painting, I need to pretty much cover the whole canvas again in paint to give me an ability to be able to push and pull it around. I need to keep those edges soft. And I can't do this if I've got dry patches of paint. I want it slippy and I want it slidey and I want to be able to pull it about. But the danger is when your painting gets to this point, it's very easy to lose control. So I need to be controlled, but I also need to be expressive, which is a little bit of a contradiction in terms. But it will give me the effect that I'm looking for, which is a very atmospheric painting. So to help create that lovely warm area on Tonks's tail, I have placed my cool purples around my warm yellows, using colour opposites to help my colours stand out. For my purples, my mix of colours are Cad Red and Ultramarine Deep. My blues are a mix of either Ultramarine Blue and White or Ultramarine Blue plus Cerulean Blue plus White. My oranges are a mix of yellow ochre light plus cad red plus white. In my warmer blues around Tonks's head, I'm using a mix of cerulean blue um, plus white plus cadmium yellow. Colour mixing is hard, but it really is the thing, if you can get the hang of it, that will really elevate your paintings. It's important to make sure that your objects are integrated into their backgrounds. And I would suggest trying not to mix every area that you look at from scratch. What you really want to do is mix up enough colours at the start that you can basically just keep adjusting your mix. So, for example, I may look at the area around Tonks's head and ask myself, is that colour more red, more yellow or more blue than the area next to it? On my palette, I already have mixed up cerulean blue plus ultramarine deep plus white. So I am going to take some of that and add cadmium yellow and white. I will then dab a little bit on my painting and assess if I think it is correct. 
If it's not, I may add some more of the orange that I have mixed up. So after I have painted that area, I then move to the next area just above it. And I start with the mix I have just adjusted for that area beside the head. I then ask myself the same question. Is it blue, yellow or red in comparison to the mix that I have just used? The area actually looks more sort of blue or purple to me. So I'm going to add more ultramarine blue plus white and a little bit of cadmium red. I work my way systematically across the whole painting like this, starting with the areas that seem the most obvious colours to me and then sort of bridging the gaps in between them. By constantly adjusting the paint on my palette and not trying to mix all the areas independently of each other, you will ensure a much more harmonious painting. And this is the finished painting. I hope you have found today's video useful. Please like and subscribe if you can. And also check out my website, sarahhallidayart.com for more details of online classes that I run and also examples of my work. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.